England versus Wales, one of the greatest fixtures in world rugby. And these teams are coming at this fixture from very different places. Hello, amateurs. Welcome to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today to discuss it. There he is. Hey, TT. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to this one. Going to be a banger. Absolutely. Late afternoon, this coming Saturday. What are your overall feelings about Wales coming to Twickenham? Yeah, well, they're 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 coming with uh, forty minutes of momentum. Uh, interesting selections. Uh, psychology again will play a part. As as if you if guys can listen to the the show we just did on on the other game um, earlier in the day. Um, psycho psychological is going to be really really interesting. But I would say the the England team to me is a vote of confidence in Felix Jones and his defensive system. Yeah, absolutely, and. I guess, yeah, let's get straight into the selections because I think this is really where a lot of this is going to be based on. So here we go, England versus Wales. And there are no surprises whatsoever. This is exactly the same forward pack that started last weekend. Elko, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I like it. Consistent. Um, you know, let's let's stick with the systems. Let's get the guys used to us. Um, I think uh a few of the forwards were mainly i think uh in, in chisholm or chesham should I say it was really um bought into this rush defense <laughs> if, you, if you look at the clips <laughs> and um i think probably they said he's right everyone else needs to go with him um and let's give this another go and it's, it's probably going to take six months isn't it maybe maybe a year to bed this thing in but i think i think uh it, it's a good strong selection gives gives them consistency um and a, and a, and a base um Arguably, it gives um, the Welsh uh, a steady target to go at and hit, um, and they can do, you know, some quite good uh, sort of analysis from from that pack from last week. So interesting. Yeah, interesting. You pick out the Chesham, <coughs> excuse me, the Chesham thing there because he jumped out of the line for both uh, the opening two Italian tries, and I did wonder what the takeaway from that would be. And I think you're right. I think. Go go with him. Everybody else should have gone with him and not um, not held back, which they did a little bit. Um, agreed. A very consistent selection here. I mean, the one area which is always up for debate, I think, in the current England side is is tight head. But I think Stewart's a really capable person around the park, and uh, and his scrummaging is improving all the time. I think so. I'm I'm very happy with this selection. And the backs, once again, exactly the same. A completely matched. 15 from the previous weekend and as I said in my selection prediction video I saw no reason to change it and they haven't no again it's good you know there's an argument to say if Ollie Lawrence was was fit maybe and um, they they bring him in but but who for because obviously he can play 13 or 12 um but uh yeah I I, I don't think there was any reason to to to, to change it um, there's a couple of young lads in there um, in Freeman and stuff. I, th I just think it's good for them as well to have consistency a week, you know, a second week in a row. Um, and, and as the new systems come in, both, both in attack and defence, and let's see how they sort of uh, evolve this week um, against a, a decent Welsh team. Yeah, and we move on to the bench and just the one change, which takes it back actually to what was selected <clears throat> originally last week with Genj coming back onto the bench instead of Urbano. And just in terms of what Borthwick said after last week's game, he said he mentioned a lot about the fact they've only had three training sessions. He talked a lot about the fact that there were five debutants in this side, and you know it's been a long time since that's happened. So based on those comments, I was pretty sure that he was going to try and keep this same team together and give them an opportunity to build bonds, build experience together, um, and hopefully bring along that performance level a little bit. Yeah, I mean, arguably it's safe, right? He's he's doing the safe thing because he's he's setting the narrative to the press, and he's kind of which is clever. And I know he's getting help with some of that stuff. So clever from him. Um, why why rock the boat and bring in changes? That just creates other stories to go on. Stick with the guys, the guys that are there, and and um, you know we spoke about uh, certainly cutting him south, making quite a big impression last week, uh, which is good. And um, Faye Wabosa will be playing against his the, the team he, he could have played for um, in Wales as well. So that's quite a, quite an interesting one uh, for sure. But it's uh, it's good to see Genji's gout has, has cleared up. I'm glad he's, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he's back as well. And just a word for myself as well about these young players, these sort of rampaging 
bucks that England have, have got at the moment and the just the groundswell of opinion around them, just because they've had a few good minutes here and a good game there and, and impressed doesn't mean they deserve to start. That you know, they need to be protected as much as anything as well. And if they can be they can gain international experience in more favorable positions, that I think that'll only be good for them and for England long term. So I'm completely in agreement with keeping you know, for example, Cunningham South and Fayo Waboso. Well, and Finn Smith as well uh, on the bench this week. Yeah, it's it's a little bit different from previous regimes, isn't it? <laughs> as opposed to getting people shepherd hooked up after five minutes and ruining their career psychologically. You know, it's it's a better way of doing it and 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 sort of giving them support and 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 bringing them through and developing them is a better way. I think he's he's doing. I think he's doing a decent job. We'll see, though. If they get whooped, then it'll be a different story. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. OK, let's move on to Wales. And this, all the things we've said about England cannot be said for Wales. Um, just before we actually start on the selection, though, itself, uh, Warren Gatland decided to announce this team a day early. What do you think about that? I mean, Gatland is king of all these kind of mind games. What do you think he's trying to do by announcing the team a day early? Well, I, I, I think he's... well. 100% he wants to be in control there's there's no doubt um but again you know going back to the psychology of things i think he's probably given the squad confidence and you know um also he he probably knew that england were going to do what they've done um uh, you know in terms of selection he's he's quite clever with that and and sort of they're not going to change their defensive tactics he knows exactly what's coming in the defense that's the that's the beauty and the beast of this I like to call a boom and bust defense, but um, <laughs> I, I I also heard on on, on another podcast um, that um, on on the BBC one, which is which is quite good this this week, um, around that he 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 likes to be in control, but also he's really paranoid about leaks, um, and potentially he thought maybe that someone knew uh, what they're going to do, so just get out ahead of it and be in control, sort of thing. But um, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, there's no mad surprises as we'll get into here. So I don't if he if he had a waited a few hours, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Yeah, and interesting a quote from Gatland as well during the team announcement. He said, "England are in a rebuilding phase. We'll go there with a lot of confidence." So that's quite an interesting spin on things, I think, as you know, well, as well based on the fact that Wales are very much rebuilding themselves. Yeah, well, the, the BBC headline was was from Danny Kerr's interview, and 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 it was something along the lines of inexperienced whales have got nothing to fear so it's all they're all just plain <laughs> yeah you know, semantics yeah okay let's get into the selection itself uh an entire front row change now i love i love some stats as we everybody knows on this show and ross petty came up with one this is the eighth <clears> time <throat> whales have changed their entire front row from one week to the next during the six nations uh period which is a lot. No other team has done it more than once before. So, I mean, a huge thing there. What do you make of these changes? Is that is that in the Gatland sort of sort of times? I wonder. Um, oh, that's the whole Six Nations period. So it's quite a while. Right. Okay. Yeah. Which well, mainly mainly him, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I find it interesting uh, as a front row player. I don't know. Like, and again, we, we keep banging on about psychology things and, and, you know, confidence is a big thing. And for a hooker in particular, confidence is a big thing. And they've, Elias had a absolute shocker last week. Now, I don't know. I haven't rerun the game. I haven't had time. I've been too busy looking at the Irish one, but if, if, if they were on him and it looks like they were and they weren't missed calls and he's had an absolute shocker in terms of throwing, well, Gatlin's now dropped him, <laughs> so he's going to feel real good. And he sat on the bench, right, feeling real good. Oh, no, probably thinking he's the worst thrower ever. Now, you know, if D gets injured in the first five minutes, then you've got, you know, you're going to have a guy coming in with no, with no confidence. Personally, I would have I would have done sort of what, what some of the other coaches have done with Section this week and, and probably stuck with that. Um, I, 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 there's no way that it was the front row's fault that they were so poor in the first half. It's just... There's just no way. I just uh, it's, it's a bit weird, and then and then to pile on that, where I'm a bit confused at what he's done here. Um, he after the game, he threw Josh Adams under the bus, you know, uh, named him and blamed him. Um, and he's playing. 
he's starting, and it's like, whoa, wow, okay. And now, per- I mean, I think I think that's the right selection. I thought I thought Adams was really really good. He never stopped trying. He was running around. He he was clearly had was very bandaged up. Uh, something going on with his leg with all the with all the taping. But he he was he was awesome, right? So. And I understand that selection. I think, yeah, you go with him and you give him consistency and you go, you know, I trust you. We're going to go on with that. But then he doesn't do it with the with the front row. So I, f- I find it a little bit contradictory. But um, maybe they've seen something potentially in the scrummaging side of things. And maybe this was agreed before that they're going to rotate. I don't know. But um, mm-hmm. as, a, as a as a front row union member, TT, what, what were your thoughts on, on, on such a big change up? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm, I'm going to take these one at a time, actually, because I think that's probably, well, almost certainly how they were done. So I think Gareth Thomas was probably would have played last week if he was fit. He's the most experienced loose head that Wales have got. So maybe now coming back to fitness, it's only natural that he'll play. And also based on the fact that Domachowski played the full game last week. So maybe would be lacking a little right. bit of energy. Yeah, might, might be lacking a bit of energy to start this game. Good so... Point. Yeah, so maybe that. Uh, I mean, there's no question D had a really excellent second half last week. Yeah. So just should. based on, I reckon this one was based on on form, uh, and 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 that respect. And the same with Azarati, who I thought played really well off the bench last week, and then they've dropped. Um, I forgot his name, Leon Brown, completely from the squad this week. So again, based on that, it really only makes sense that Azarati would start. So. Yes, it's all three in and out, but I think obviously all three selections would have probably been done on individual merit, and it just so happens yes, that fair. all three have been changed. Um, Adam Beard keeps his spot in the second row. I thought he was relatively anonymous last week, but he's been given another shot. And then Mann comes in for both of them, who's injured. Uh, yeah. yeah, and obviously we need to speak about Raffle and Wainwright, who were both outstanding last week. Um Okay, yeah, let's move best, on to the backs. Best players on the pitch, weren't they? Here's the backs. This looks, um, I don't know, to me it looks like a better back line than it was last week. Yeah, I think North coming in is is, is massive. Um, obviously, uh, Asello, fa- uh, sorry, didn't fail his HIA, but as a, as, a, as a stinger on his neck or something, or whiplash, so is out. Um, it's intriguing, this back line, because of what, defensive system they're going up against it's going to be so interesting um they've got a back three there that if they can get if they can break that sort of um you know where where England will be coming for them which will be the 13 channel and north um if they can if, and, and that's I, I love that selection because they're going to be north is a big man he is a big target for that rush defense um and if they can be clever and lloyd can be sort of uh, clever and use um uh, Use North, you know, as a as a deceptive line and get it out the back to this back three. Then I think, you know, England yeah, picked off if if they get this system wrong. So it's really interesting. I, I think this is a, as you said, it's a better back line and it's certainly a better back line to to sort of pick the lock uh, of this England defence. I'm I'm really looking forward to to seeing what happens. Yeah, just a note on Johan Lloyd. Apparently, he might be struggling with an injury. So if he does oh. get out there. How long will he last? Uh, we will see, but that could be a major spanner in the works to this Welsh side if they Jeez. lose him either before the game or during. We'll find out. Um, just go on to the bench now. And this is all... Actually, um, Dylan Lewis got brought into the squad at Tighthead, and yet they've selected Archie Griffin, who I think is uncapped and has barely played this season for Bath. That's quite an interesting one for me. I mean, I wonder whether Dylan Lewis didn't have enough time to get up to date with systems and, and all that kind of thing, or whether they just rate Griffin higher. I mean, it's it seems a strange one to me. Yeah, um, it's an interesting one. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing good things about this kid, but um, you know, going up against, uh, well, if he, if he gets on, he'll be, he'll be up against at that stage. Um, Again, Charlie. Sorry, Genji. Um, so that'll be that'll be interesting. But uh, maybe they feel he's got a, you know that youthful energy to 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 take him on. But um, yeah, interesting selection that. Yeah, and just overall in terms of tactics, when I was looking at the Welsh squad and my selection preview, I suggested that they'll probably start off in a relatively territory based game. But just looking at the kickers they've got, Lloyd doesn't kick the ball a long way. Winnet made a couple of shorter kicks. 
last weekend. I think if they go against England in a kind of traditional territory-based game, I can't see them winning that. So although they want to get a foothold in the game, although they're going to want to, you know, exert some pressure, I just wonder if actually playing fast and loose this weekend against the rush defence and trying to pick them off might be their best route to success. It's a really difficult one. Um, they're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place and, and, and then they've got, you know, the hangover of what happened to them in the first half. And, I mean, if... <sighs> I don't think you want to be playing fast and loose with England in the mood they're in and the way they're testing this defence. I just, I, I think, I think they're going to have to kick the ball um, a lot. Do England have the same sort of ability in their back line at the moment to cut them open like Scotland did? Uh, no, I don't think they do. So I, I think you're going to see a very pragmatic uh, Welsh team. I think they're going to kick the leather off the ball. Um, I don't think you'll want the ball, in, certainly in the first half. Weather doesn't look great again. Um, I don't think you'll want the ball. Um, I think whoever doesn't have the ball is probably going to be best, best fit to, to, to win the game. So it's going, to be, it's going to be intriguing. I think it's still going to be a, a good game. I think second half will probably open up again, and especially if, if uh, either team is down by a big score, they'll probably go after it again. But um, it's, it's a tough one tactically for... For Wales, and again, going back to the cycle, there's been loads of stuff over here around like what happened in the first half. Was it the players? Uh, were the in either half were players list? Was that the game plan of what the coaches had told them to do? So did the coaches tell them to, you know, kick a lot in the first half, and they they did that, and it didn't work, or did they do something that the coaches didn't tell them to do? Who's right? Who's wrong? Um, and the same in the second half. Did they did did the coaching team say? throw that kicking game out the window and you guys go, or did the players just go, screw this, let's go, <laughs> screw what they told us to do, we just got to play. So it's really interesting tactically um, and I'd love to know what, what well, maybe we'll, we'll see in the Netflix show uh, next year what actually happened, but uh, it, it's a it's a tough one to get right for for, for Gatlin, but percentages-wise, I think you, you need to be pragmatic and, and it's, it, you know, it's international rugby, um, you know, the, the, normally it, it's so close all the time, bar last week where it was just crazy both halves. But I think I think we'll see a, a more traditional game um, and, and probably quite nervy and very, very physical. Yeah, I think in terms of the kicking tactics, I think um, on reflection, I think Wells will probably kick a lot. I just think we'll see lots of different types of kicks. I think we might see them move the ball apart or two and then try and hit it in behind uh, along the floor a lot as well, I'd imagine. So I right. think we might see quite a creative kicking game from Wales because, like, a, like I mentioned, they don't kick the ball that far. But if they can make it really difficult for England to clear their lines, that could be a good route for them. Well, well, certainly to to stop them rushing, as we've seen with teams playing against South Africa, you know, little little grubber through just to turn the defence or, or at least keep them guessing, little chip over the top. So I think you might be right, actually. They'll probably look for that space between... You know the, the 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 where the line is coming up and the full back, or where is there where is the England nine covering um, at any given time, and, and look for gaps there just to just to put a bit of doubt into the um, the English uh, rush defence. Yeah, and it is due to be raining as things stand uh, on Saturday mm. afternoon. So I'd imagine, obviously, England will be playing relatively pragmatically themselves. But in terms of their tactics overall, I just I don't see them changing too much. I think they've got their blueprint now. Um, based on last week, obviously the weather will change slightly how much they play from certain positions. But I think we're going to see a much more joined up um, effort in defence. And I think you're right. If Wales do try and play fast and loose, that could play right into England's hands, potentially. Yeah, I, I think they'll be all in. Uh, they've got a, and that's the only way you can play that defence. Um, we, you know, we saw where, where, where one player rushes in, the other person doesn't, and then they get a pass out. They've got just got to back and, and and come in hard, but if it's wet and rainy, and I think Bor, yeah, personally, I think Borthwick will will probably be telling them to kick more than we saw last week if it is raining, um, and uh, there will be lots of box kicks. But that's not to say that there won't be attacking rugby. There will be, um, and there will be sort of some offloading stuff. And I'm I'm looking forward to see, um, Tommy Freebum, um, get get getting a try hopefully this weekend. Absolutely. That's what we think. Oh, no, we did predictions, Elko. Who do you think is going to win? I think uh, it will be England plus 11. I think England too, although I've got 
some nervousness about this game, as I always do when England play Wales, no matter what the relative levels of the teams. I think there might be some tricky moments. I think Wales will certainly have some big periods in this game where they run England a little bit ragged. But I think overall, England will have kick and discipline and length and accuracy and then defence and attack based on the back of that that will see them comfortable winners. I don't see it being overly high scoring. 28-16, I'm going for, to England. Jeez, okay. I like scores <laughs> in <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gatlin doesn't, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Okay, but that's what we think. What do you think at home? Do you think uh, we've sort of talked about the, the key selection decisions? Are there any players that you think are going to have a key impact that we haven't mentioned? And what about the tactics? How do Wales get a win? How do Wales get a foothold in England's territory and then exploit that for points? Do you think we've got that right as well? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps ever the people find it. Elko, thanks so much again for your time today. Thanks, CT. Enjoy the game. Thanks, mate. For those at home, you can subscribe there. Watch that one next. And don't forget, 